Hello. Welcome to Music Theory Pre-Grade 1, Week 5. Brought to you by To Enable. This week we'll take a look at time signatures, covering bars and bar lines, definition of time signatures, beaming and grouping of notes. Time signatures. Let's take a look at bars. A bar is a vertical line drawn on a staff to mark or divide the staff into measures. Vertical line to divide, to mark or to divide the staff into measures, helping us to determine the specific number, specific number of beats. So bars are vertical lines that mark or divide the staff into measures to determine the specific number of beats. A musical piece is divided into equal bars. Let's take a look, let's take a look at an example of a bar. This is, this is how a bar looks like. When it's two lines, it means end of a section. And when it's still two, but another line is a bit thicker, this means end of the piece or end of a song. Time signatures. Time signatures tells us the amount or the type of notes each bar contains. They tell us the amount or type of notes each bar or measure contains. At this foundational level, we're going to look at or learn about two time signatures, the 3-4 and the 2-4. The top figure beat tells us the number of beats. So the top figure represents, this is the top figure, the top figure represents the number of beats in a bar. How many beats are there in that particular bar? And the bottom one, tells us what kind of beats are there in each bar. Bottom one, what kind of beats are there in a bar. Every beat is equivalent to a crochet note or rest. Every beat is equivalent to one crochet note or rest. Remember that rest are also counted. Let's take a look at examples of time signatures and their meaning. This is a 2-4. Two four time signature. The top beat means how many beats in a bar? Number of beats. The bottom one, what kind of beats? So we find that we have two crochet, what kind crochet beats in a bar? Let's take a look at an example of two crochet beats in a bar. The first crochet beat is here second crochet beat so there's the time signature three four top one tells us the number of beats the bottom one what kind of beats so it's three beats and what kind of beats crochet beats in a bar let's look at the three crochets time signature moving along beaming and grouping of notes Beams are used instead of flags when two or more notes are less than a crochet note value in one measure or bar. So we use beams instead of flags. Beams instead of flags when two or more notes are less than a crochet note value in a bar. We beam them, meaning we join them together. With beaming, we are able to see the position of notes in a bar. It makes reading clearer and easier. Placement of beams. Give, give space in between notes. Crochet and minims will take up more space. An imaginary bar line between notes helps us to keep accurate length of notes. Let's take a look at an example of an imaginary bar line. This is an example of an imaginary bar line. It's not supposed to be visible. 
this is bit one bit one then this is the end of bit one it ends here then this is the beginning of bit two bit two end two end two end then it ends here beginning of bit three as you can see so they help us to get the accurate length of our nodes imaginary bar lines then this is an actual bar line this one it's visible on your staff put rest on silent beats so every silent beat it must be represented by a rest if a bar has rest only a semi brief rest must be used irrespective of the time signature if a bar has rest, let's say for instance, a 3-4 bar will, will have 3 crochet rest. Instead of writing out 3 crochet rest, rather write a semi-brief rest, just one semi-brief rest to represent all the, the crochet rests that were written. This is irrespective of the time signature. Remember this rule. It's very important. Beams are one half space thick. We'll just we'll take a look at that now shortly this is an, this is an example of quavers we have four quavers now this is wrongly notated why these quavers are supposed to be beamed together joined together let's take a look at an example where they are beamed together correctly you see here this is the correct example of writing or notating four quavers you join them together you do not leave them out separately this is an example of two quavers beam together semi quavers beam together they are beam together using you put two lines one two and when it's just quavers it's just one thick line when it's semi quavers it's two lines because a semi quaver has two flags and a quaver just or only has one flag when it's one quaver and two semi quavers the, the the top line represents the quaver and these two lines now they represent they represent the semi quaver and remember when it's two two lines like this one thicker it means end of a song or end of a section a piece end of a song double bar line in a 3 4 bar you can beam four quavers which are equals to a minimum see example 1 four quavers they are equals to a minimum they equal to a minimum properly beamed together in a whole 3 4 bar with quavers they must be beamed all together Let's see example two. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this whole bar has quavers. You beam all the quavers together since it's a three, three, four bar. You beam them all together. This is incorrect. They're supposed to be joined together. Joined together. In a three, four bar of six quavers. If the first node is a quaver rest, beam the remaining five quavers or five quaver nodes together. The first node here is a quaver rest. And then the remaining nodes are one, two, three, four, five. You beam them together. This is incorrect. This is supposed to be joined with the other nodes. Where a 2-4 time bar consists of 4 quavers, they must be beamed together. See example of 2-4 bar beaming below. As you can see, 4 quavers, they are beamed together. The count would be 1 and 2 and. Beam note stem direction. We position stems based on the middle line of the staff. Stems are positioned based on the middle line 
of the star. For example, if the node is above the middle line, the stem will face downwards. If the node is above the middle line, the stem will face downwards. And if it is below the middle line, below the middle line, the stem will face up. Will face upwards. When beaming nodes, the stems are determined by the number of nodes above or below the middle line. The stems are determined by the number of nodes above or below the middle line for direction. If more nodes are below the middle line, the stems will go up. Or if more nodes are above the middle line, obviously the stems will face down. In a situation of two nodes far apart, we take the feathers. If we have nodes that are more than two or two nodes far apart, from the middle line for direction of stems, we take the feathers node for direction. All beams are one half space thick. The distance between multiple beams is also one half space thick. As you can see, this is one half space thick. One half space thick. Also here, one half space thick. Even if it's two. They still one half space thick, even when they are two. This is too thin. Incorrect. Correct one. One half space thick. Still correct. This is incorrect. The lines must be straight. 